Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Caroline. How are you? I'm, I'm good, thank you. And welcome to the Carolyn Williams Show in conversation with Tony Thomas. And I'd like Tony to tell you exactly who Tony is. Who is Tony? Uh, Tony is a chartered financial advisor. Yes. I've been advising people on money matters effectively over the last 30 years. And it's something that I believe passionately in. And um, I'm hoping to carry on doing this for many, many more years. So in terms of the types of advice I give, I mean, it does range, but in, in essence, it's, uh, it consists of what we call lifestyle planning, uh, which involves uh, uh, areas such as investments, uh, uh, retirement planning, and also estate planning, uh, but many, many others, but those are the key areas uh, in essence. But it's, it's helping people to understand their money's better and help them make better informed decisions. Excellent. I would add to that, Tony, as to why I spotted you and asked you and invited you to join me live here on the Karen Williams Show. Because on LinkedIn, um, there are very few people that capture my attention, very few. But the people who do, they gain my attention and they keep my attention. And you're one of them. And uh, particularly during COVID, because everything was becoming so difficult to connect with our customers, our clients, our friends, our family, then your um, avatar, your content online, your branding online was becoming quite uh, noticeable. So the other um, point I'd like to make, besides saying that your content on LinkedIn is very, very good, is the fact that you're from Cardiff, am I right? Uh, just outside, I live in a small village uh, called Tona Revel. So it fits in nicely with my name, Tony Revel, as some people call it. Um, so yes, it's, it's 20 minutes outside of Cardiff. And I've got offices both in Bridgend and in uh, Flantrescent, uh, opposite the Royal Mint. So it's nicely placed uh, on the motorway for to get most places. And of course, with the lockdown, everybody's doing Zoom, et cetera. So it makes no difference where we all live. It doesn't make any difference at all, Tony, but it does from the point of view of where your heart is and your home is. And Tonna River is um, a town that I know very well. And that's because a lot of the um, residents of Tonna River are um, employees of Ford Motor Company. Correct, yes. In Jen. And so they are part of my family. I call that my family. So Tonerival, it features highly. We did have a plant manager for Ford Motor Company um, from Tonerival, and now he currently is in France. He went to uh, Moscow, and now he's in France. So, you know, the globe is there for us all to enjoy and travel and become who we are. Well, my office in Bridgend is actually next door to the Ford's uh, factory. So I'll see, you know, uh, different situation at the moment. But uh, so, and we have many Ford employee uh, clients. So it's, um, there's a lot of uh, synergies there, I think. So. Absolutely. What would you say, this is coming back to you as, as a person, Tony. What would you say that um, coming from Tonnerville, has provided you with in terms of the tools that you've you, you've needed in your work well i think it's um i mean i'm a a ron the boy if shall we say so uh, which i think you know um so it's i think really it's about the community that we've all grown up with so it's pluses and minuses with all these things but i think in terms of the pluses i think it's very much um an environment that I, I was brought up in, which is to uh, help each other in the community that you're in. And I think part of that is, you know, I, I've seen over the years, you know, lots of people struggling uh, financially. Um, I've seen some people, you know, having some very difficult periods. And I think part of what I wanted to try and do when I entered into this industry many years ago was be able to, to be in a position where I could... Again, even if it was make a little difference in people's lives, 
just help them manage their monies better and maybe not have to struggle quite as much as what they've done previously. Yes, that, that's the kind of answer I was looking for and you gave it. Um, I did teach in Triochi Comprehensive in the 70s and I lived on Gethin Road uh, in Triochi. I know it. I, I rented, it was a teacher's house and I rented it and enjoyed that period of time of teaching. Um, I made a lot of friends. I joined the choir. I mean, we had a, a tremendous uh, Triochi male voice choir, but um, led by Canon Jones, who was um, a famous, as you can see there, a yes. famous conductor. And I was lucky enough to uh, be in the era where women were invited to join. So it was a mixed Triochi choir. So they, I've got fond memories and um, I, I really was being a bit naughty by encouraging you to talk about the community spirit because it's a huge spirit. I think if you, unless you are from that type of community, um, you don't always appreciate the strong sense of feeling that is uh, in these communities. And one is a sort of togetherness, if you like. So, and it's very much sort of looking after each other. So. Um, it, I think it's good. It's, it's a very good point for you to highlight that because I think that does help. Certainly in my role, uh, what I'm doing, it's all about trying to do the best things for other people, uh, helping them uh, along the way, and just being there to support them as and when they need it. Yes. So the two things that jump out of um, the Ronda, from my point of view, besides this huge community spirit, which I loved. And, um, you know, have really fond memories and still meet up with people from the Ronda. And obviously through Motor Ford Motor Company, there are many, many people from the Ronda. Is the rugby, because the rugby, um, to me, is part of the fabric of the Ronda. So Very much. what's your view on that? Uh, I think uh, you can't uh, be Welsh and not be associated with rugby in some form or, or other um you know we all know that in terms of the certainly the the, the valley areas in particular uh, every town has a rugby team uh, uh you know obviously that's struggled in recent years but there's still yeah. many many teams there and again it's that sense of community rugby is about um a sense of community a place for people to go um, and I think it's just another example of how, should we say, the ordinary working class person was able to, to build that community feeling. And rugby played a huge part of that. Two points there from your insight. Um, the funding, and that was very apparent to me about three years ago when um, I joined a group of business people in Miskin Manor. And it was to do with sitting next to a group that were funding the rugby clubs in the Ronda. And obviously Max Boyce had been playing there the night before yeah. to help them raise funds. So th again, that's all part of this rich thread in the fabric where people come together to raise funds. So what's your view on events in the Ronda from that point of view? Do you see people really making big efforts to help and support people through funding? I think there are great efforts that are, are carried out. Uh, I think sometimes there's more that can be done. There's no question more that can be done. Uh, I do fear a little bit about the rugby clubs in particular because they are very much short of funding and the numbers going or attending uh, rugby uh, in general, is much lower than what it was. Yes. But it's not the only sport to suffer from that. Not true. Uh, you know, there's so much competition these days, and you know, especially with you know TV, Sky, etc. Then a lot of people can see it, you know, without uh, going outside the front door. So I think it's um, it's a challenging time for them. Um, but I'm sure with uh, many of them, like all people in any form of walks of life there's going to be some creative ideas that they're going to come up with because uh, rugby is too important to, to lose that, um, that, that sort of part of our fabric. Absolutely. And again, you, it's a, a wonderful conversation we're having here because you're leading me to, you know, naturally into the next point. 
yes, there are many other things that suffer in a community because during COVID, we all know exactly what that means. And the digital side of it becomes hugely important to link up any sport, any creative, and you use the word creative. So in your view, Tony, can you um, discuss the creativity behind your digital marketing? Okay. Um, as you know, I'm quite, well, I'm quite uh, active on social media, LinkedIn in particular. And I think I went through a stage where um, I know I'm limited to how many people I can adv uh, help on a one-to-one -one basis. So part of my original thought process, which is probably about 18 months ago when I first started, uh, was about how can I connect with more people and help more people in terms of providing them with uh, helpful information that they can use themselves and improve their own financial well-being. And we all know, it's, uh, you know, one aspect of your life leads to another. If you're not healthy uh, in terms of your finances, then it means that you tend to have uh, perhaps uh, unhealthy relationships because there's friction, or it could be that your yeah, health in general is not great. So, you know, they all are interlinked with each other. But I think for me, I have a passion of helping other people, and I saw social media of a way of doing that. I think I've learned an awful lot over the last 18 months in terms of how to communicate with people. And I like to think I've got a little bit better from where I was 18 months ago. And now it's all about providing content, information that people can uh, read or watch, because obviously there's some videos on there, where they can take this information and use it to answer a lot of the questions that they, may t they might have, afraid probably to ask somebody else, and um, from that point of view, I think uh, if people want to use it, it's a great resource because obviously, as you know, I've got a website where all that information is stored. I've got a YouTube channel now, which is growing. Um, I'm about to launch a podcast sort of, uh, in, a, in about a month's time. So there's lots of ways I'm looking at to communicate with people and provide that information, which I believe would be very helpful for them not just in this period, uh, but obviously ongoing. Yes. And I like that attitude because that's a positive attitude because you've already said, you know, coming out of COVID, we will be. And then there's that um, time where we use everything we've learned before COVID, during COVID, and to our, the, the benefit of our world, our work, our relationships, and come together. And that's exactly... Um, what you've explained there. One of the things I'd like to pick up on, on your comment there was, when you look at uh, the financial services or anything to do with um, you know, helping people, I was a member of the BNI for some time. And we, as you know, Tony, because you started smiling, you'd have to get up at a, a silly o'clock time to get there to give your silly 60 seconds where everybody was really asleep, which is what I observed. So when uh, it came to the financial planners or the insurance brokers or, you know, the banks, it was very cut and dried and it was very monologue and it was very, oh, here we go again, this is what we've got to do. And very few people had the spark at that time of the morning to be able to bring it alive. You have that spark from my point of view. And to be able to say to people, you know, don't be frightened of asking questions. Well, I know as a teacher, a previous teacher a long time ago, that to, to have questions would be, oh my goodness, the spotlight's on me, a frozen person, the other side of the spotlight. And they go, oh, I, I don't know what to say, don't know what to do, it's all that kind of thing. I've had to go through that with lives, because you said, I've learned an awful lot, you said, in the last, was it 14 months, you said, or 18 months? Well, 18 months in terms of my online sort of yes, work, of if course. you like, so. Of course, but that's about rehearsal, so if you're doing anything live, like I am, we had to do it every single day, every single day, every single day, every single day. And there are lots of things that you've got, oh, that's rubbish, that's awful. And we are self-critical. So it, it takes an awful lot of courage to burst through that self-criticism and the self-destruct button to come, oh, let's go, let's do this. So you, to me, have come 
forward as something quite natural in, in um, a life situation. And when you talk about questions and answers, this is an important point. So over to you again. You mentioned that, yes, if they're frightened of asking me questions online, because again, people will hide the fact that they might not spell very well, or they might sort of get to the real um, sentence and question that they want to ask you very quickly. So that's about the, the, the coordination part of it. And sometimes you're just not used to, to um, using the computer and the keyboard. So they're very, very important points because if you don't know how to use a keyboard <laughs> and you don't know how to spell, which you know there are a lot of people that in, in among us that don't, and then you're really struggling to um, formulate a question, then that means there is an awful lot that's going to become a barrier. Now it's not a barrier you're putting there, it's a barrier that we have as a yes. community. So what would your um, advice be there? What would your welcoming note be there? Don't be afraid to ask questions. It's no different to what you would say in, in uh, the classroom. There is no silly questions. And even if you can't um, articulate a question, I will be able to understand what you are asking because I've had those questions many, many times over the years. But there's different, there's different mediums in terms of asking these questions. One, it can be you know, just sending me an email. Uh, could be sending me a message on LinkedIn. It could be picking up telephone. Uh, it could be uh, you know many different ways. And I, I think the point I'm trying to make is that just don't be afraid to ask questions. Doesn't matter how little it might seem, or if you can't quite phrase it in the right way, because I will you know I can respond by really um, asking you then uh, gentle questions in terms of. Can I sort of just clarify what you mean? Yeah. Is this sort of the, you know, what you're thinking of? Right now? How are these uh, sort of things important to you? Why are you asking these questions in the first place? People have got problems. And sometimes when people have problems, and we've all got problems or we've had problems in the past, how nice would it be to have had somebody you could ask a question to and know that you will get one um, a, a sort of an answer which is going to be really helpful at a time where you are going through that particular problem. And I think that is perhaps lacking sometimes. And it's more to do with, as you say, barriers from the other person's point of view. Yeah. It's afraid to ask a question. And I think for me is that um, I've got through my own problems over the years. So I know how important it is to be able to speak to somebody else. And a lot of the things that we do, or I do in particular, is it's not just about somebody has money to invest or whatever, you know, they've, they've, they need some form of direction. A lot of it is just simply, uh, I'm a bit stuck. I don't know where to turn. What's the answer to this particular uh, problem? And I'm happy and always have been to speak to anybody with these types of issues or or in some cases, simple problems, because it, it's, I have a lot of pleasure in just being able to point people in the right direction. Yeah, signposting. Yeah. Wonderful answer, thank you. And the two points that I want to uh, glean from that statement was help uh, in terms of, you can always ask a question and don't be afraid. The fear, as we understand it, has increased tremendously during COVID, tremendously, yes. the fear aspect. So I understand exactly your, um, I would, I, I, I'd sort of think of you as somebody that's not just a financial advisor, because you've got a warmth about you, Tony, you've got an understanding about you, you're real. So what I'm saying to you is, you're human. And that comes across, so I'm sure your clients feel the same way. But having said that, when you're human and you yourself has gone through lockdown, I myself have gone through lockdown, you then see the window opening because you're going forwards. I see myself going forwards. What, if you're going to sort of sum it up as a marketing brand and banner, what would you say you'd like to put out there for anybody right now, right now, 
either a new startup either somebody who's in business, either somebody who's struggling in a family concern because of family finances. What would you say would be your main marketing line? Well, my strap line, which I think you've seen, is live for today, make the most of what we have uh, around us, be grateful uh, and thankful for everything that we have, um, but my strap line to go back to that is to live for today and invest for tomorrow. And I think that's, that's come home to me more and more recently is that in terms of the pandemic and obviously the lockdown that we've been facing, then I think it's the first few weeks, I'm sure it's been the same for everybody or for, for most. It's been that roller coaster of emotions. I describe that as a washing machine uh, for, uh, for uh, emotions because that's what it feels like sometimes. And yes, the first part of that, certainly the first month, was you know panic, fear, all the things that we've been going through. And I think over the last sort of few weeks, it's been more white. Right, how do I change? How do I make the most of this opportunity? And I see this as an opportunity to um, take myself forwards whether it's in business or in personal, in terms of how can I use this opportunity, which will be once in a lifetime, to make my life better, to make my business stronger, and to solve, obviously, some of the issues I've had over this period of time. So what I've done, and again, hopefully, in the message I would give to others, is that use this as a golden opportunity to improve your life, improve your business, uh, learn new things. I'm learning new things all the time. Um, hence some of the projects I've been involved with recently. So I think for me is that once at the beginning, it was all doom and gloom. Now I see this, uh, uh, this period as going to be uh, the seeds or the fledgling start of something really exciting going forward. I, feel and I would like say the same for everybody else. Yeah. Use it as an opportunity. I hear that message. Um, I hear your excitement and I equally feel excited. So I'd like to close on when people want to ask any questions. And obviously I know from experience what that means is they'll go away and then all of a sudden they think, oh, I wish I'd asked that. But it's usually too late in terms of the broadcast. So what I'd like you to do is to reiterate how they get in touch with you because you're going to start a podcast, I hear. You're on LinkedIn, I see. I hear you live and um, it's clear, it's loud and clear, your message is loud and clear. So for any future clients or current client, clients or any, anybody that might want to ask you something, how do they get to you? How do they connect with you? Well, I'm available in most forms of medium at the moment. So obviously, we can, I'm, um, can be contacted via uh, the telephone. Um, I don't know if you want me to give out a number or any sort of uh, details, but in terms of I'm available via telephone, email, uh, WhatsApp, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn Messenger, Facebook, um, my website. Uh, YouTube, so I'm right. available in most places. You just have to, uh, don't give it any details out, you just have to type my name into a search bar, Tony and Thomas, and financial just, advisor, just, and yeah. I will come up. That, that was the bit I wanted. So your name and off you go, say it again. So in terms of my business, then I'm, my trading sort of style is Tony Thomas Wealth Management Limited or TT Wealth is where the logo is, and that's something I'm growing. Um, I have a website, uh, which is TT Wealth. The actual address is pensionsandinvestments.co.uk. My email address is tony at wealthmasters.co.uk. My telephone number is 0758559294. Did I say that correctly? Zero seven five eight five five nine two four nine four, and you contact me, and I will respond certainly within hours, but definitely within twenty four hours. What an excellent way to connect with people online, and um, from my point of view, 
I liked the fact that you had as a strapline the, the wealth master. So for me, when I think of you, I think of Tony, wealth master, and that immediately gives me a feel for what you do and offer. Now that we've got to know Tony in person, and I thank you for that, that helps an awful lot. So I wish you well through the uh, COVID period that, that hopefully won't go on for much longer. And um, thank you for spending time with me this morning on Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.